All right, guys, what is up? We are back on the topic of file transfers. This time we'll be exploring a topic I have never actually made any videos on, any content on on this channel, and that will be Windows file transfers. Now, uh, this is going to be geared towards what you need to know for OSCP. So I'm going to be teaching you some of the older ways to do uh, Windows file transfers that uh, nowadays there's better and easier ways to do it, but because these OSCP boxes that you're dealing with are so old, uh, this is going to be your most reliable method. So if that sounds interesting, stay tuned. I got a box uh, that I have a shell on, a Windows box, and I have my attacker machine down here. So if you watch the Linux video, similar kind of demo to that. Now, one thing that I just want to say, I touched this briefly in the intro, but uh, basically... There's some of the older ways to do it because, uh, you know, before PowerShell became really, you know, became what it is today, some of these older Windows boxes, like when you're dealing with Windows Server 2008 and, you know, older and uh, boxes that are like, you know, that old, they actually didn't have PowerShell on them uh, or they had like stripped down versions of PowerShell, couldn't do nearly as much as what it can today. So, if you're dealing with any modern system, certainly in the real world, I would prefer some of the newer ways. Like there's an impact. has a module called uh, SMB server. So you run that, you can spin up a SMB server on your attacker box, connect that way. That's a pretty solid way. I couldn't get that working. Uh, I, I personally haven't used that. I want to explore that more in the future. That is uh, probably the best way to do it. I see IPSEC actually uses that method quite a bit. But when you're dealing with these older boxes, you know, you're not going to be able to utilize the PowerShell stuff. Now, I know they did update the the labs. And so most likely you'll be able to do a lot of cool PowerShell stuff on the labs. So you can use some of these newer methods of transfer. But from what I understand, and I haven't personally experienced it again to confirm or deny this, but what I have heard people say was, while the labs did get updated, the exam boxes are still like the, the same kind of outdated boxes. So if that's the case, most likely you won't be able to use, uh, you know, or you shouldn't be relying on PowerShell uh, to get you through the, uh, the Windows file transfer stuff. Hopefully you can, but if you can't, this video will be here to serve you. In the future, we will dive into some of the newer and uh, more sleek ways to do these uh, file transfers on Windows, but what you need to know for OSCP. So uh, let's let's get right into it. The most tried and true way that, uh, you know, the most old school way to do this is with a built-in Windows utility called CertUtil. And uh, the issue with CertUtil is sometimes it can mess up your binary files, but if you're dealing with something that is not a binary file, then this ops absolutely just, you know, this should be your go-to on these older boxes. Just use the CertUtil method. And another note is this will work on newer boxes too, right? It's a built-in uh, Windows command line utility. So it'll be there for you if you need it. Uh, but if you are dealing with binaries, the way that I typically did this on the OSCP was I used a Python FTP server. Now you guys might have your own preferred methods of file transfer, but I'm just sharing you what was reliable for me and uh, for sure is something that you could reproduce, you could use for yourself. If you find something that you like better, let me know down in the comments section below on OSCP what you liked better that you might have used. And, uh, you know, we're all leveling up together here, right? So let me just demo the, uh, with that being said, the, the cert util way of doing things. Now, before I'm able to do that, I need to launch a server. So I got the WinPs exe, right? Putting this all into context, Say I have an initial shell on a Windows system. I'm looking to escalate my privileges to, uh, you know, Windows uh, NT Authority system, you know, the, their root account, basically. I might want to do some enumeration on the system to see if there's any, you know, you know kind of gauge what my avenues are for, you know, potentially getting this privilege escalation. So WinPs is a great script to do that. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. And... Uh, yeah, so basically what I would do is I would start a web server. And we can use Python 3, the module HTTP.server, to do that. We'll run it on the default port 8000. We're not going to specify a port here. And, uh, yeah, just to show you that way. And uh, up here on the victim machine, we're going to actually run a cert util 
uh, with this URL cache flag. And this is just kind of a command that I memorized. Uh, you, you can look into what each of these flags are doing, um, but you don't really need to know that because you can pretty much run this every time. And uh, I always have to check what my IP address is. I am the worst at uh, remembering that. So we'll just put that in here. And uh, in this case, we're looking for winps.exe. So we should be able to specify that right here. And then we're going to give it the output file name, what we want it to be called you know, once we download it on the server. We'll call it winps. We'll put it all lowercase just to show you. It doesn't matter what you name it. This is going to be how it shows up here. So we, we run that command and uh, it should uh, pick it up here. It is kind of a slower thing if I do remember. But then you see this command here that it completed successfully. I didn't see any requests down here, so I'm not so sure that it actually got that. Oh, and uh, that's the issue, right? So this is important. It's, it's a good thing I made this mistake, right? It's actually pretty good to illustrate this to you is we probably don't have write permissions in this directory as the user that we currently are. We're just a regular user on the, oh wait, we actually are NT, NT authority system. So, so we might, but if you are a user account, right? If you are a regular user account on the system, it's often better to go to the temp directory uh, to do this. So we can do C windows temp, right? So you go into the temp directory and we're going to, have to run this command again. It looks like cert util and uh, URL cache f. So Windows can be tricky like that with the error messages. Sometimes it's not as as uh, easy to debug as as Linux, from my experience. And one of the issues probably, here's probably why. This is probably why it failed as well. We didn't specify the port, right? In this case, we're not running it on port 80 like I'm used to doing. I'm actually running it on port 8000. So we have to specify that here. So that that's the real reason it didn't uh, it didn't uh, download it. But, uh, you know, cert util might look like it worked, but you got to check, right? And, uh, but for, for demo purposes, I'm going to go into the temp directory because chances are, if you're just a regular user, you're not going to be able to write to say like system 32 folder. So we'll do that there and then output file name winps.exe. And now we'll try it again with this. And there, this time we saw the get request come in. And so now let's take a look. And there's actually quite a lot of files in here. Uh, let me go up here. Do, 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 winps.sh, or .exe rather. Do we see that? Yes, we do, right down there. So we have done the file transfer. Now, like I said, we're dealing with a binary here. URL cache, or the cert util rather, it can sometimes mess with binary files. So I'm for good measure, I'm going to show you the way that I... Uh, typically handled binary file transfers on Windows. Because a lot of times on Windows, you are dealing with executables and binary files as opposed to Linux where you're normally dealing with just flat files. So what uh, I typically like to do for that is I will use, uh, it's called pyftpdlib. So I'll show you here, this module here. on There, there might be, you know, there might be a Python 3 version of this, and if anyone knows what it is, yeah, definitely let me know. I'd be interested. Uh, but, yeah, I normally say 21, you know, the default FTP port. Now, if you don't have, one thing to note is if you don't have this, I don't think you have this by default. You just got to do a pip install um, for pyftpd, and uh, then pip will install the module for you, and you'll be able to run this. So now we're just uh, go ahead and connect to the FTP service uh, from the victim box, you know, to our attacker box here. And so should be able to do that with, I'm not sure if we can use a dash A flag to specify an anonymous login. Basically, this uh, Python FTP server defaults to an anonymous login. So password, username anonymous, password anonymous. Let's see if we can kind of shortcut that with this uh, flag here. Not sure if I can. Cool, and we see that we have a connection here. So once we're in here and 
might be having some issues with the shell. I tried this earlier, and uh, it was kind of hanging here. Um, and this is where you, you can kind of see you'll have issues sometimes with certain file transfer methods. That's when you just got to use another one. Use your cert util, use, uh, you know, SMB server, use your different ones. This one traditionally has worked for me a lot of the times. Um, okay, yeah, here we go. I'm actually in. I, I did a DIR. I got the response back. So when you're transferring binaries, I guess this is just what the shell happens to look like with this uh, particular shell that I have going on here. What you want to do, this is really important, right? When you're transferring binaries, you, you need to tell FTP that uh, you want to transport it in binary mode. That way, I think it does some special, probably it does some special like basic uh, 64 encoding so that it doesn't actually screw up the, uh, the bits in your binary. Because if you don't specify that, then during the transfer, things are going to get messed up and the binary is not going to run properly. So you want to make sure that you actually say binary here. And that will put it into binary mode. Typically, when you're in an FTP session, you'll see some kind of response after you type this, but this seems like a limited shell here that I have. Uh, but then basically what you want to do is you want to say get and then the name of the file you want to get. So in this case, I want to grab this one here. So I can say get this file and you see down at the bottom there was a request to get the file all right and then when i'm done using this i can just type by and uh now you should see that we have the file here somewhere let's see typically it'd be at the bottom Oh yeah, yeah, here, here it is. It actually, that's right. <laughs> that that threw me off because I was like, well, there should be two here, right? Because we got a file from earlier. It overwrote it actually. And this is an important thing to note about Windows, right? Uh, it doesn't care about the case. It's not case sensitive. Like Linux is case sensitive. So if we had winps.exe all in lowercase and then we had this, those would be considered two different files because it cares about the case. Windows treats the cases the same. So it actually overwrote the file that we had from before. And if you check the timestamp here, uh, well, you can't see my current time, but yeah, this is the current time here. And so, yeah, there you go. Uh, that is how you do your transfers from for these older boxes. The nice thing about the FTP method and uh, as well as the cert util method, they'll, they'll work on any Windows box. Uh, and so this is how I would recommend to deal with these older boxes. The newer boxes, there are some cool PowerShell ways to do it. I'll be showing you guys that in future videos. If that's something you're even interested in, you know, let me know. Definitely give me feedback on that. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button. It should definitely help out anyone you know, dealing with those older OSCP exam boxes. Uh, but yeah, definitely, uh, you know, if you want more information on this stuff, I did a Linux file transfer video as well as a whole slew of other bits of content over here and what you need to know for OSCP. So I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.